Now, welcome to Majesty's House of Music. Today, I'm going to talk about rootless chord voicings. Now, a rootless chord voicing means that you are playing the chord without uh, the root of the chord. For example, when you're playing a C major 7th chord, you're playing C, E, G, B. But what if we take out the root, then we come up with a creative voicing, right? So I want you to watch this lesson until the end to understand how to play rootless voicings. And this is part of my full course, which I call the Piano Chord Voicings course. Okay, if you want to learn different kind of voicings apart from these beyond the rootless voicings, consider getting the full course, which will help you understand different styles of voicing your chords, both on your right, right hand and on your left hand on the piano. So let's get right into this lesson and watch us till the end. Uh, welcome to the fifth part of this DVD. Um, in this part, we'll be doing rootless voicings. Rootless voicings and some kind of improvisation. Uh, in the previous four chapters, we've been dealing with different types of left hand voicings. Uh, so in this, we'll be doing rootless voicings. Uh, what I mean by rootless, maybe let's say you are in the key of F sharp, let's say. And this is your one chord. So this one, this F sharp is your root. So this is your root. But now if you decide to play a rootless chord, what will you do? You will eliminate the root, which is the F sharp. Maybe now if you play it this way, if you play it this way, that becomes a rootless chord. So instead of playing it this way, you play it this way. That becomes a, a rootless chord. So uh, we are going to look at various uh, rootless chords you can use. Uh, let's say for your one chord. Uh, let, let's, since we are in the key of F sharp, let's just stick there. Uh, So that's your F sharp. Maybe you want to play a one chord. You don't have to play it this way all the time. Uh, there is this voicing that uh, that people like to do. You, you will hear something like. So, so that one involves a B on your left hand. On your right hand, you have an F, A sharp, and uh, D sharp. So then, actually, this is the chord I'll be stressing on. This one. So you have your your A sharp. You have your D sharp. You have your G sharp, and you have your C sharp. So that one is the one chord. You hear now when I play the bass note. It sounds really fancy. <laughs> it sounds, yeah. So you, you can really use that as your one note, especially when you have a bass player. So the what, what I was doing here, this one is, is just to lead me to the one chord. That's my one chord. You can use that. Uh, we, we also have uh, another one chord that uh, people really like to use. Uh, you remember in our, in our reduced voicings, we dealt with a chord like this. So this one we said leads you to the four. Uh, so 
you you can imagine something like uh, like this. Uh, instead of doing it this way, you will find some people doing it this way. So. So instead of doing it this way, since I'm people doing it that way. So what are the notes uh, in this chord? You have your E, you have your G sharp, you have your A sharp, you have your D sharp. Then here you just have F sharp, C. C sharp, I mean F sharp, C sharp, and F sharp. So, and, and that's your one chord. Then that's a little to the four. So, okay, so. It sounds really fancy. Uh, basically, the idea behind this chord, uh, we were just playing a. Uh, an E major seven chord, but uh, you you can even play it this way. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Uh, you can um, you can drop this to the three, so you have what whatever I showed you. Especially when. Uh, the band is holding at the one and the drummer is playing the cymbals. You can play this. Or if you don't want to play it with the root, just play this. Or... So, that's pretty much simple. You can have... <laughs> Let me just give you those. Uh, the other one you can have is play this straight on. And play to the one chord. So, this one leads you to the four. So that one, you can play it with any inversion. So basically, it's about being creative. You can even play an E major chord, major chord at nine, you know. So, uh, that one really sounds good. Uh, so those are some of the voicings you can use. Uh, let's say you go to the two. So I'm using the guitar chord voicing I taught, this one, in the last chapter. Playing it with a one. So what can you do? This one sounds really nice. So. What you can do, you can just uh, eliminate the, the root and have something like this. You see this one? Or maybe this. You hear, it, it sounds really fancy. You can even decide to fill up this chord. So you have something like, you know, and have the whole of this thing. <laughs> that, that, now that one is a giant chord, but anyway, it sounds really nice. So you have F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. You have C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and C sharp on the other side. So. so Sounds really good. Or maybe you can decide even to play a one chord. You see? So. 
I want code on your right. And you, I'm sliding it this way. So. So. So it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe if you wanted to play a, a major two chord, just play it with this straight on. So play it with a six chord. Like that. Or that. It really doesn't matter. You can. Oh. So basically, uh, that's uh, that's your thing. That's the two, a few two voicings. Uh, basically, these voicings are all about being creative. You don't have to stick to the exact voicings I'm teaching you. Uh, you can add in notes in between and all that. Uh, maybe let's go to the three. So you can do this for the three. You can play a one chord. Then you can play the same thing. So. Okay. So instead of. Or maybe this. So. 